Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews. Today we're taking a look at my first Italian shoe. It's the Diodora Mythos Figore. Let's run with it. Before we get started, I do want to say that these shoes were provided to me by Feet First Sports, an amazing locally owned running store in Columbia, Maryland. However, I didn't have a chance to preview this video and this final synopsis is my own. I also have a link in the description with a code that will give you free shipping and a slight discount. I don't get any personal benefit, but it does help a local running store. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing so I continue to make these reviews. Here we go. This is my first Diodora shoe, and if you're not familiar, Diodora is an Italian company, and they're trying to make some inroads here in the United States. They have some really interesting looking shoes that kind of almost look like Hoka's with a different twist. Now the shoe we're taking a look at today is the Mythos Blue Shield Vigor. It's a really long name, but it's a max cushion stability shoe that implements stability in a really unique way that we'll talk about later on within the review. And there's a bunch of different components to the shoe. We got a lot going on, so I'm excited to talk about it. The Mythos Vigor costs $170 and weighs 11 0.8 ounces which is definitely on the heavier end of things however that weight gets you a lot of premium materials the shoe has excellent build quality and i think this is going to last you a lot longer than like a typical daily trainer however at 11.8 ounces that is definitely an absolute unit of a shoe as you can probably already tell, we get a ton of midsole here with 34 millimeters in the heel and 24 in the forefoot. And for those of you good at math, that's a 10 millimeter drop from the heel to the toe. And something I recommend if you're going to try this shoe, and actually for most Diodora shoes in general, they actually recommend this, is that you go down half a size. I think even on their website, they say try to go down half a size. So if you typically wear a size 10, I would bring that down to a nine and a half just because it does have some extra room. So just go down half a size if you want a proper fit. So let's start off by talking about this massive midsole. The foam here is made out of something called Diodora Enema, which is essentially an EVA foam that's blended with a proprietary compound to make it more durable and have a more unique experience. Now, in my opinion, while using this shoe, I'd say that the midsole and the foam itself is definitely a little bit more on the responsive side, a little bit firmer, and kind of more geared towards longevity and impact protection. It has a nice level of kind of cushion to it, but I definitely would not classify it as like a soft or bouncy foam. Uh, I would definitely put like the New Balance more or V3, you can actually see it up there in the corner as being a lot softer and bouncier when it comes to just the overall ride of the midsole. And it did have a nice feel to it. It just wasn't as soft or bouncy compared to something like a Hoka or the New Balance More V3 or some of the other like max cushion shoes you see out there. I think they were really kind of, or in my opinion, I think they were trying to go for more, uh, are going for a more durable midsole. And we'll see as I get more miles into this shoe. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind. You see a big midsole like this and you kind of might think, you know, soft, squishy, bouncy, and that's not the case. It does have a nice level of impact protection, a nice level of softness to it. It just isn't like a soft and mushy uh, midsole. You do get kind of, I'd say a more responsive ride for having this much foam. Now this is a stability shoe and it does stability in a really interesting way that I haven't personally seen or experienced before. And what do I mean by that? Well, essentially if we take a look here on the laterals, lateral side, you'll notice that you have this kind of gap here uh, between the heel and the forefoot. And this allows it to compress a little bit more towards the outside. And if you flip it around, you'll notice that you get a huge chunk of foam uh, on the medial side and it's a little bit more kind of filled in, if you will. Now there is no dual density foams here. It's not harder on the medial side don't have any posting or anything like that but essentially what this does is it simulates um, posting or simulates kind of that stability on the medial side of the shoe so by cutting out this section here it gives you a little bit more give on the lateral side and less on the medial side thus kind of simulating a posting and I will say even without that posting or dual density foams on the medial side you really do notice it as soon as you step into the shoe it really feels like you have more support towards the inside which I think provides a really stable experience I thought the shoe provided a really stable ride so if you're someone who wants a stability shoe I think this gets the job done again in a really unique way by having that cut out on the lateral side and then just more foam on the medial side the shoe has a torsion system I think they call this CCB and it's basically this plastic plate that kind of goes through this gap here and then runs through the middle of the midfoot and essentially what this does is make the shoe a little bit more stiff you do get a little bit of flex in the forefoot but overall the shoe is pretty rigid uh, with not much flex towards the middle to rear of the shoe and again and that trussex plate helps keep the shoe from twisting or having too much torsion which then adds more inherent stability to the overall ride 
So to summarize, you essentially get this cutout on the lateral side, more foam on the medial side. Again, there's no posting or dual density foams. It's all the same kind of foam. Uh, you just get more foam on the, the medial side, cut out on the lateral side, which creates more inherent stability to the medial side, which helps with pronation. Now you also get that plastic plate in the middle, which basically acts like a torsion bar or a torsion plate, which really allows the shoe to be a little more stiff uh, and only have flex in the forefoot and keeps the shoe from twisting too much, which really does help with just the overall stability and this is something I'm personally experienced when using this shoe it really does just feel like a really nice kind of firm stable ride however we're not done talking about the cushioning on this shoe it features something called blue shield which is one of Diodora's proprietary technologies that they like to feature and show off in a wide variety of their running shoes now what exactly is blue shield well they actually show you here and I'll flip over the shoe and if you look through the clear plastic trussic system you'll notice all these tiny little blue cones and this is what blue shield is so what exactly do those tiny little blue cones and blue shield in general do? Well, essentially, according to Diodora, it seeks to minimize asymmetrical behavior in your feet and provide strategic cushioning and impact protection in key places. Now, in my personal experience, I actually didn't notice the blue shield. I didn't like see or feel anything completely different compared to like a typical running shoe. The midsole does provide a nice level of impact protection. It feels well cushioned while not overly soft and squishy and bouncy. Uh, it does have, again, more firmer ride to it, but it does a good job of like kind of um, dampening the blow as you run. I think that's kind of a good way to describe it. So I think the Blue Shield, it's not something that kind of like sticks out as just being like a really interesting thing you feel on your foot, but I think overall it does provide a nice level of impact protection and cushioning while you're running. And kind of going off of that, you get an ortholite insert, which does have a decent arch support and a decent level of kind of cushion to it. And then if you kind of take that out and you look inside the shoe, you get a layer of PU and then the blue shield. So you actually can't see the blue shield if you take out the insert. They have a, another layer of kind of like a, a polyurethane, I think is what PU stands for, and then the blue shield, which kind of goes into that whole kind of impact protection uh, methodology. So I realize that's a lot. The midsole has a lot going on, but that kind of goes into why this shoe weighs 11.8 ounces. Again, you just get a really thick, well-cushioned midsole. You get the blue shield and then the PU layer and then the ortholite insert, which again, really provide a nice level of impact protection, but we do have a lot going on with the midsole. As far as the upper goes, we get engineered air nylon mesh, which has kind of like your classic engineered upper feel to it fairly comfortable a nice level of cushion with most of the breathability coming from the toe box you do get some substantial 3m plastic overlays with the diodora logo being the most substantial on both the lateral and medial side and another thing i'll say is that the toe box does have more room in it they expanded it so if you have a wider foot i think this toe box will work well for you it's not quite like an ultra toe box but i really did feel like my toes had a lot of room to kind of sprawl out once they hit the ground so big wide toe box with a lot of room the tongue on this shoe is extremely well padded very comfortable and quite thick and plush uh, the laces themselves are quite thick as well and they almost kind of feel like velvet they look really interesting kind of like a fabric-y sweat pant material if that makes sense um, but overall the lockdown was really good especially in the midfoot. And part of the reason of why this shoe has such a good lockdown in the midfoot is because we have a lot going on here. The tongue is gusseted and you do get three layers of material, essentially goes the upper and then you get this inner cage. It's this blue material that wraps around the midfoot and ties directly into the laces, kind of giving you another layer of, um, I guess, security and then you get the gusseted tongue so you get a really secure midfoot with a lot going on again it goes the mesh upper then you get this blue kind of cage if you will that wraps around your midfoot and then the gusseted tongue so a lot going around the midfoot which is why i felt so secure while wearing this shoe and it's also interesting to see they have two places where the laces interact with the tongue almost kind of in the same spot and i'm not sure exactly why they did this but you have the kind of classic tongue slit where the laces tie directly through then they add this little piece of green rope that also keeps the laces is secure directly against the tongue so I'm not sure exactly why it might be a style choice but it does have two different laces with the um, two different places where the laces can interact with the tongue there I said it <laughs> Moving to the rear of the shoe, you get a really well-built internal heel counter with plenty of padding in the ankle and Achilles area. Again, I think they went all out with the padding and cushioning on this shoe. You definitely get a nice level of comfort. Didn't have any, uh, basically, Achilles issues, and I thought the lockdown was good, especially in that heel region. And again, the heel counter is fairly sturdy. Moving on to the outsole, we get a ton of thick rubber coverage. It's some of the thickest rubber I've seen in a while. Almost potentially looks like a trail shoe with how much rubber they put on the shoe. Again, kind of going into the 11.8 ounce weight. 
weight. Now the forefoot rubber is gonna be a little bit softer. I believe it's a balloon rubber. And then the heel, we get the D5000 rubber, which is gonna be a little bit harder and a little bit more durable. And I'll also say that the forefoot and heel area is extremely wide, kind of gives you that hoka feel. And again, you can see the cutout here on the lateral side, which gives you a little bit more give again to the lateral side than the medial side, which is, again helps simulate the medial post and provides more stability for pronators. So for someone who supinates or rolls to the outside, I would probably go in a different direction. Um, but you can kind of see that again, when you flip over the shoe, they left out foam on this section, which provides more stability on the medial side without having posting or dual density foams. I know I'm saying that a lot, but y'all get, y'all get the gist. So those are the basic facts about the shoe. Let's talk about what works well for the shoe and what doesn't work so well. The first big positive was that this shoe really worked at being a max cushion stability shoe and it wasn't too intrusive. Yes, you can definitely feel that it's a stability shoe, but it's not overbearing because there's no plastic um, or there's no like true medial posting. Again, you do notice it because they cut out the middle of the midsole and it kind of left it blank here. So you do have a little bit more roll than to the medial side, but it wasn't super intrusive. So if you run in a true neutral fashion, it's not like an overbearing experience. And maybe if you want something for your longer runs, if your form starts to break down, you do want that support i think this would be a nice option and the other thing too is that the the midsole while not super bouncy and soft provided a nice level of impact protection i thought which is really comfortable overall i enjoyed the wide forefoot and just the overall stability and the stable nature of this shoe plus the upper i really liked how wide the toe box was it allowed my toes to sprawl out once they hit the ground the tongue really well padded had that midfoot cage that kept my foot locked in and the ankle and achilles area had plenty of padding and the other big positive is I think this shoe is really durable and well-made. I think it'll last you a lot longer compared to some of its competitors. You get a lot of premium materials here. It just feels like a solid shoe. You get a ridiculous amount of rubber in the forefoot and heel area. And that midsole is said to be a little bit more um, geared towards the more durable end because it's not as soft, so it won't bottom out as quickly. However, this shoe wasn't perfect and there are a couple things that can probably be improved upon. The first negative, at least in my mind, was that I think weight was probably at the, the bottom of the priority list. At 11.8 ounces, this shoe is definitely heavy. Uh, you probably could bring down some of these materials. It might be a smidge overbuilt with how much plastic and overlays and midfoot cages they included on this shoe. So for someone who wants a lighter uh, max cushion shoe, you can probably go in a different direction. I realize this is a max cushion stability shoe and those tend to weigh more. However, in my opinion, I think this is just a smidge overbuilt and maybe a little bit too heavy. The other thing I'll say is that this shoe isn't the most breathable. You do get some ventilation in the toe box, but the midfoot, tongue, and ankle and Achilles area are really thick uh, and well padded, which isn't great in the breathability department. And as we kind of get into spring and summer, um, I would probably keep that in mind if you want something that's a little bit more breathable. It might work well if you're in a colder climate, um, but the only ventilation that really takes place is in the toe box. So where does that leave us? Well, I think if you're looking for a well-built shoe that'll last you for a long time and you want a max cushion setup with some stability, I think this will be the shoe for you. Um, it's really well made. You get a lot of great components here. The midsole works really well for impact protection and it just feels extremely nice on foot. And in my personal opinion, I like the fit of this shoe. The really wide toe box was nice for my toes, allowed them to sprawl out and just have some wiggle room. And the overall ride was also really pleasant as well. The stability mechanisms weren't too intrusive. You notice them, but not to like an overbearing extent. And I liked how the midsole gave me a nice level of impact protection without being like super soft, mushy, or like overly bouncy, if that makes sense. So it gives me kind of another uh, tool in my tool bag if I want some easy, fun miles. However, if you're someone who wants a max cushion stability shoe, it's a little bit lighter, a little bit more breathable, a little bit more nimble, I would probably go in a different direction. I also say that this shoe is pretty stiff or I guess relatively stiff. You get those flex screws in the forefoot, which help with the, the flexibility in the forefoot area. But overall, this shoe is pretty rigid just because again, you get that plastic trussic systems in the middle of the shoe. So I think just keep that in mind. Again, the breathability, not the best. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit bulkier, um, but does have a nice stable, um, well-cushioned ride overall. Well, that concludes my review. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know in the comments what you think of this shoe. Also, if you're in the Columbia, Maryland area, I highly recommend you check out Feet First Sports. They're locally owned and can get you in the right shoes so that you can continue to run mile after mile. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews. Hope you guys have a great day. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.